I'm super. How you been, Mike? Never better. Thank God for the weekend. Hey, everyone. I want you to meet my new neighbors, Bob and Helen Smith. Helen, Bob, meet Beth Anderson. Beth's a commodities broker down at Philippi Investments. Oh, a commodities broker. That sounds intriguing. Well, it can be quite a challenge, but I gotta be honest, I eat it for breakfast. And what do you do, Helen? I'm a homemaker. Well, we only have one child, but she can be quite demanding, can't you, little boo-boo? <laughs> You know, but motherhood is really much more That's demanding nice. than I ever <laughs> thought it Kevin, could you? be. <laughs> oh, oh, hey, Bob, I'd like you to meet, uh, uh... Dick Schaefer. Hey, Dick, Bob Smith, and this is my wife, Helen. I'm pleased to meet you, Helen. Hi, Dick. Dick's thinking about buying the house across the street. Well, everybody on the block loves that house. Hey, everybody on the block has that house. <laughs> <laughs> It was nice meeting you, Dick. Hey, Bob, can you give me a hand chopping up these steaks? Sure. <laughs> Throw away my prime years, trailing after a bunch of snotty kids? No thank you. Hello, no thanks. Hello, I want to do something with my life. Wait a minute. You consider raising a family nothing? Well, it's fine if you're not suited for more substantial things. Do you have any idea how much suffering would fail to take root if more people were just good parents? Well, I, uh... What's more important than that? What kind of job? Uh, A job saving lives? Uh, Is that important? Yeah. Uh, what about risking my life? Well, I. Uh, what about confronting evil on a daily basis for years so that people like you can sleep in safety and security? Uh, would you consider that kind of job substantial? Um. Yeah. Yeah. I. I would. Yes. I would. Well, that's the job I gave up for my new job, raising a family. And no You don't even know where the hospital is, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> do you? <laughs> uh, you think anybody noticed? <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I know what this means. <sighs> Couple of months of bandages, scar makeup after that. Well, we wanted a normal life. Did we? I think I found him. Honey? I heard it. A burglar? I don't know. Well? <laughs> okay. Wake up and be sharp. You know you're sloppy when you're not awake. Yeah, okay. Oh, and honey, don't hurt him. We're starting fresh. And, and honey, you... don't break anything, okay? I just got the house organized. All right, already. I'm gonna try to enjoy this anyway. Don't move. What did you take? The silver? My grandmother gave that to me. <laughs> that grandma! What big teeth she has! Syndrome. <laughs> 
cool, huh? A little something I was working on when you sent me to the Skookum House! Good ideas never go out of style, so here we are. Hey, don't bother with 911, sweetheart. I've cut the wires. Just leave the scene, okay? You know, you, you really should remodel. This place would be nice. If you opened it up. Oh, I like that. Don't you think? It's airy. It's airy. I believe I said you could go. Now don't try to help him out, you little scamp, and I'll let you live. It's not your fault. You just shouldn't have gotten involved with a superhero. <gasps> oh, no. Elastigirl? <laughs> you married Elastigirl? Oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> and had a kid? It's a whole family of supers! Looks like I've hit the jackpot! And you, you are breaking the law, Mr. Incredible. You know supers aren't supposed to breed. <laughs> Forget it. He cut the wires, remember? Do you smell gas? Grab on. I remember in one of the earliest meetings I had with the sort of Pixar, they call it the Brain Trust, it's kind of a small group of other directors and story people that look at each other's films, they talked about what is the thing that's, that's worst about them going into hiding? Are they avoiding lawsuits or are they avoiding, you know, people coming after them? Villains coming after you that have a grudge against you, if they found out that, you, that Clark Kent was Superman and could track Clark Kent down to his home with his wife and kids, um, that's dramatic. That's much more visceral. Um, the lawsuit thing is what I always had pitched because to me that's a very mundane thing to bring down a superhero, which is kind of the, the whole vibe of this film is is the mundane and the fantastic you know but I recognized that the other one had a visceral uh, value so I came up with this uh, syndrome character and the thing that was interesting about it was that everyone 
uh, when we did this sequence, responded to Syndrome much more than the villain that had been a part of my original pitch, which was this Zarek character. Right. We ended up going back to my original pitch, but the thing that we got out of it that was valuable was the villain. New Super now. I'm Syndrome, your nemesis in it! Syndrome. <laughs> Don't act surprised, Incredible. I mean, Mr. Smith. I loved him invading their house. The idea of him showing up at the end of the film in the house was always in my original pitch. But the moment that I miss is using Bob as a battering ram to wreck his own home. We took that moment and translated it into the film, but it just doesn't have that same... It's in there, but it's symbolic not... Symbolic impact. No, no. As we did in the home and, and house. And um, the moment that I miss most of all is him having the mom and dad frozen in the ray and hearing the sound of the baby and going... <coughs> and moving down the hall towards the baby's room yeah. with mom and dad floating in the air and they're unable to do anything about that. I think we made the right decision in terms of what's in the movie, what the movie is. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think we made a mistake, but I miss those aspects of this moment. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a particular feeling that I got from that, that that we don't have that feeling. We have a lot of good feelings in the movie but we don't have that specific one, and I kind of wish that we did. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you. Mwah, love you.